So you think you can waste my time? Kima. Ah, don't do it. Please don't do it. Just give me some more time. We have one week. One week! Your brother are dying. Now, now, now. You don't define person. Now, money you they think, yo. You don't think of say, hey, make you they cry, say your brother die. Your brother. How many brothers you get, Seth? I told you the Junior. Junior. You sound like someone tried to murder you. That's because someone did. Rula, what are you saying? You know, Shay, Glenda didn't want me by now. Why they look me like that? Shay, you never asked me before, ni. Why don't you deserve this? Ah! 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 Since the day when you don't come here, you know get car. And I see they carry up and down. I see now you want to me now 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 for that place. Where you where you spy my bread? Eh? I know they do go for another person where you look like your brother. Me, I busy. The movie starts with Rola being threatened by thugs who demand money they believe is rightfully theirs from her father's will. Desperate, Rola seeks help from Joseph, a mechanic and proposes a risky plan. Joseph will pretend to be her deceased brother, Junior, to claim the inheritance. Initially, things seem to go smoothly. Although, it's clear from Rola's later conversations that her father has recently passed away. The thugs, however, are ruthless and give Rola one week to come up with the money. The scene cuts to Rola receiving a frantic phone call about her father's death which disrupts her plan with Joseph. Rola is devastated and calls her acquaintance, Robert, insisting on attending the funeral despite the short notice. It's implied she cancels her plan with Joseph. The thugs seem aware of Rola's plan and threaten her again, revealing they know about her deceased brother and his attempted suicide. They believe Rola knows where her father hid something valuable. Meanwhile, Joseph tries to contact Rola but can't reach her. The scene shifts to Shelley arriving at her childhood home, visibly grieving. She finds Joseph there, pretending to be Junior, and Joseph is shocked to learn the real Junior is dead. The situation worsens for Rola. Discovering her brother's death, she realizes the thugs already knew, adding another layer of mystery. Grief-stricken, Rola confronts Joseph, exclaiming, You know what this means for you. Whoever our father had in mind, we need to get rid of the body. The thugs escalate their threats, promising to harm her relatives if she doesn't produce the money in a month. Rola, panicking, cries, I've done nothing but love you. Why do I deserve this? Rola calls Joseph in desperation. She has less than a month to get the money or the thugs will come for her. She even contemplates drastic measures. Joseph tries to calm her and suggests stalling the thugs by telling them Junior is away. Rola isn't convinced, saying, but Joseph, we can't resurrect Junior before then. The situation seems hopeless. Rola realizes the thugs know Joseph is at her house and tells him to leave for his safety. These people are going to come for me. It's the end for me, she says, defeated. The scene ends with a glimmer of hope. Joseph assures Rola they'll find a way out of this mess, though things are far from over. Rola insists Joseph find a hotel with maximum security. But the plan goes awry. Rola frantically seeks a secure place and faces a comedic moment when the driver misunderstands her needs. Back at Rola's house, her auntie arrives and mistakes Joseph for her deceased brother Junior. This sparks a crazy idea in Rola's head, turning Joseph into her dead brother Junior in less than a month. Joseph, understandably, is confused. Rola explains her desperate situation, revealing she borrowed a lot of money from a loan shark named Mike by pretending to be her politician father. Joseph is hesitant but agrees to help Rola on one condition. He wants half of the inheritance. Rola, realizing she has no other option, reluctantly agrees, 
A time jump shows two weeks have passed. Rola is back at Joseph's place, begging him again, and he finally agrees to help. Joseph practices proper English to transform into a sophisticated gentleman in just two weeks. The situation becomes increasingly complex as Joseph receives threats from someone trying to stop him from helping Finn. They only have a week left before a critical event called the Reading of the Will, and their enemies are closing in. The movie ends with a cliffhanger. Rola and Joseph's plan to impersonate Junior is fraught with danger, and their enemies are aware of their actions. As the story unfolds, the audience is left wondering who is threatening Joseph and what will happen during the reading of the will. The scene closes with Rola and Joseph determined to find a way out of their predicament, setting the stage for a suspenseful continuation. The police arrive and arrest Shelley for murder of Robert JNR and attempted murder of Robert Rolla. It is revealed that Shelley was having an affair with Rolla's father and Jojo is her half-brother. She was trying to keep this a secret so that Jojo would inherit the money. The movie ends with Joseph still impersonating Junior and Shelley in jail. So what do you think about this movie guys? Let me know in the comments section. I would love to read your comments. Thanks for watching this video. For more amazing content and film reviews, please subscribe to this channel. And until we meet again, I am Crency, and this is African Book Gist.